everybody. I got a story to tell. I've got a wonderful entrepreneur here. He's in the fight. He's in the battle. You're going to love this interview. Uh, special guest, Rick Smith. Thank you for coming on InventRight TV. Well, hey, Stephen, thanks for having me. Just a second here, I guess, entrepreneur. Will that make me look a little smarter if well, I, I did that? It, it helps. You know, it helps me occasionally. I put these on and <laughs> after a while, what the heck? Hey. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll do one of these too. <laughs> you got it down. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you're in the fight of your life right now because you're launching. In fact, you have launched. You've launched a beverage. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Wait a minute. That's hard to do, isn't it? 3% of all beverage startups make it to 10 million. Okay. So, well, well, well. you know, <laughs> that's not bad. It could be worse. Um, show up, show up, show your product for just a minute. Let me see it. Show, bring, it, let's see in the front see, of the camera. This is my babies. So I've, we've got three SKUs to start. Right, um, and we can get into it. There's. Uh, all right. Oh. I'll zoom in. Very nice. Go. Okay, tell me about your product. Why is your beverage? Why do I need your beverage? Well, first of all, the the brand is called Hyvida. It's spelled H Y V I D A. So I know your audience would appreciate, you know, the first thing is it's a brand. You got to come up with a name. And I spent about five months trying to find a name that I could mark <laughs> and get the domain. <clears throat> and it's relevant. So Hyvita. So it rolls off. It's three syllables. H-Y stands for hydrogen or hydration. Vita is actually Spanish for life or high life. Um, and I was able to get the domain and that sort of thing. So. Why beverage? Um, it's my midlife crisis. Now, I came from advanced technology, uh, medical imaging. I ran a semiconductor operation, uh, merged it with a VC-backed company. We took a public, very advanced technology. Um, wasn't a lot of licensing deals, licensed technology, licensed out technology. Um, but, you know, at, at that journey, I wanted to move on. I wanted to move into a, a, a space where um, you didn't have the regulatory barriers that you would in a medical uh, environment that you can go right from concept to, to market pretty quickly and beverage is certainly that that case um, In fact, it's so easy to start a beverage brand that every mom and pop and Tom Dick and Harry have okay. and that's about only 3% survive and um, It's really when you get down to it. You can you can pick out really quick the at least the 20 10 to 15 percentile that okay. have a but but Rick I go down to the store and I see all these beverages Why am I gonna buy yours? So we, what we did is we infused molecular hydrogen and magnesium into a beverage. Um, and I took, a, I really took a tech approach to this. So if you look at all beverages, you know, and I, I have an engineering background, an MBA, and what I refer to this on the shelf is a cylindrical billboard with a bunch of commodity crap on the inside. That's pretty much what you're staring at when you go up and down the beverage aisle, telling the story and branding why yours is different because in reality is, particularly in sparkling water, there's no difference between the major brands in sparkling water than the generic. In fact, they're using the same ingredients, the same co-packers, and so you can launch easily. So I took a technology approach. Molecular hydrogen is a super powerful antioxidant. Over 12, 1300 medical studies now with it. Harvard's researching it for a whole host of reasons, particularly cognitive function, stroke reduction. Um, the Japanese Ministry of Health has approved it for cardiac arrest syndrome reduction. And we can get into the science behind it, but because of my tech background, I researched the medical studies and I was in the medical industry. I really understood that this is powerful. And what I identify with this is it, it could be a profound enhancement to any beverage. A great delivery beverage is a great delivery mechanism for hydrogen. But what I noticed is nobody could figure out how to launch a hydrogen infused beverage without it being incredibly boutique, not scalable with their own little operation. But what does it do for me as a consumer? Why do I care? Tell me. Why do you care? Well, it's a powerful antioxidant. Molecular hydrogen is the lightest molecule in the universe. Okay. So it can your blood brain barrier in, neutralize inflammation in the brain. Okay. Uh, so that's a key part. It's Im implicated in uh, respiratory function, circulatory function, digestive health, okay. but really it's cognitive benefits. 
clarity, mental clarity. And a lot of beverage, we talk about muscle recovery and workout recovery. But what where there's fertile ground is cognition. Most of us aren't a professional athlete. I do a little bit of workout just so I can try to, you know, fit into my size 32 waist pants again. You know, that's it. I'm 48. You know, I'm, I'm not trying to get to win the Boston Marathon. What I want to do is not have a headache and I want to be in peak mental performance okay. all day. And then I get home and I have a family and the stress of all that, the daily life. That's 99% of us. Okay. This is a product that you can engage at the office. This isn't something you put on the treadmill. This is something you can take in the car ride with you with traffic. Um, and it's guilt free. So what the beauty of hydrogen is in a product like this is by adding magnesium as well, we take the pH up for a smoother taste experience, but you get the same amount of magnesium as a banana, okay. the same amount of antioxidants you do an orange, but it's zero calories, zero sweeteners. It's a true guilt free sparkling water. So you kind of get the best guilt of both worlds. Guilt free sparkling it's a, water. Yeah. But, Can you read but, that? But it does so guilt. much more than that. Okay. Tell me this. Okay. Okay, sounds great, right? But how much work is there involved in doing all this? How many stores are you in now? Because you've launched, you're in stores. I mean, you're you're in business. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, first of all, I didn't know a damn thing about beverage when I started this, right? So I, um, so surround yourself by people that that know the industry is okay. the first thing I'd say. Um, my co-founders are all PhD, very, you know, um, I only have a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering when I'm, <laughs> when I'm at crowd. <laughs> I'm very comfortable being the dumbest guy in the room. Um, so, uh, you know, so I, we added a, we found a board member who had about 35 years of beverage executive experience. Um, and he was a, he was a mentor. He's been a mentor and help guiding us. And then we added a, a group of, uh, of folks as almost like a contract sales team with collective 50 years in the beverage industry. So yeah, I mean, you know, you raise capital on that. I did an equity crowdfunding. You need a little bit of capital to get rolling. Uh, filed my initial patent application, reached out, had to find co-packers to make it, had to, had to make product by hand to add hydrogen because hydrogen is not a there's no machine at a standard production house that can put hydrogen in it is that we where your ip our, is that where your ip is by the way yeah 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 so we have four patents uh in the application stage um the first one is on just the base method to create hydrogen and and introduce it in a way that's zero disruption to a standard line in fact we don't even touch the can that's the beauty okay. of being able to leverage existing infrastructure. There's zero perturbation or disruption in the existing line. We wheel our machine in. We set it right next to the line. Nice. It takes a half hour to set up, pound out 150,000 cans. I break it down and put it away in storage, and I'm, I'm back in a few months. It's wow. that simple. That's clever. That, that opens the door for licensing and doing that with other brands. We get into that conversation later. I love so, that. I love that. So, you know, I, I did it by hand. But, but, a, but why wouldn't you for, just license that instead of create your own brand at the very beginning? Because I'm one massive kistic SOB. <laughs> no, the reality is, and I, I've, I've learned this a long time, I've seen a lot of interesting technology. And what I see is people, they're out in front banging on doors and trying to get somebody who has the wherewithal to commercialize it. Hey, look at me, look at this technology. The reality is until you prove that it works and you take matters in your own hand, nobody's gonna care because when they look at you, they look at an investment. They don't see an opportunity until you prove them that there's an opportunity. Okay. Okay. So we went to market as a proof of concept on a bootstrap budget and received amazing feedback on the product, it tastes better. We weren't, we didn't go after it for taste, but it ended up being a superior product on a lot of fronts and we won awards. How many stores are you in? About 1,500 right now. Okay. How is it, how hard is it to get shelf space? Who'd you have to kick off or who'd you have to pay to get shelf space? Well, I had to give up my firstborn uh, to get into. <laughs> uh, some stores, they're pretty accommodating. Um, We've, certain cases we had to pay, but you know stores are always looking at what's called velocity and how the turns of these products. Um, but the other part is they're looking at trends, and what you also have to look at is who are those types of stores that would embrace something new. Okay, it's important. You could try to go to Walmart 
And I've, I've heard a lot of stories where people said, yeah, I started a, a food or beverage product and I got into Walmart right away. And I said, well, there was your failure. Nothing against Walmart, but here's your problem. Walmart says, yeah, I want you in 1,500 stores. I want a free X unit per store per SKU. And you realize each unit is 10 bucks, three SKUs, 30 bucks a store. And all of a sudden you're in for $45,000 just to get it on the shelf. Okay. And you don't know if your label's right. You don't know if the product's going to resonate with the consumer. Start small and focused and pivot. Mm. Go find a couple of stores where your target shops. So our target consumer shops at some of these more independent wellness stores. Now, now we all think of Whole Foods, but Whole Foods is still too big yet for us okay. in certain cases. So okay. these independent stores are all over. There's Every town has three or four of these or five of these. And, you know, you're in the L.A. area. Is that right? Lake Steve? Tahoe. Oh, Tahoe. That's right. I'm sorry. Tahoe. So, um, but like in L.A., there's a chain called Last. Yeah, there's nothing up here in Tahoe that any, that's good for you at all, basically. But so... But but Rick, tell me this. So you, you took this on. Um, you didn't really have a background in the beverage. You got the right people around you. You've learned along the way. It's a lot of pressure. Pressure? No? Yeah? Yeah. I mean, my hair was thicker than yours when I started this <laughs> two and a half years ago. Yeah, because last time I met, you had a full head of hair. What the, what the heck happened there? No. How, how, what about your family? Tell me about this. Stressful families, your wife... Loving you, like, what are you doing? Why aren't you home every once in a while? Yeah, or when you're home, would you acknowledge us? Right. You know, <laughs> my mind is off here. Um, or I got my phone on, making a call. Um, okay. Yeah, you know, they, they know that they know the journey is stressful. Um, right. You know, shoot, I'm, she, <laughs> her car and my car combined are about 40 years old. You know, I mean, look, that's the, that's, that's the reality of it. Um, and, but it's the most exhilarating, best okay. job I've ever had. All right. Bottom line, I've been in the corporate wicket, and what I've realized is what kept me up at night was waiting for people around me to have the same passion and motivation as me to get it. Right. And now I get to lead it. I get to surround myself by those people who – will uh, express that level of passion. But the same token, people who will challenge me to rethink and, and, and learn along the way, because I certainly know that not every decision I made was the right decision, that's okay. for sure. All right. God, I could go on forever on this one. Um, what else can I ask? I think we covered it all. I just want everybody to know one thing. Um, there's a difference between being an entrepreneur and an inventor. Is that correct? Difference? Can oh, you... yeah. Okay. Yeah. Entrepreneur, you've got to do everything, right? An inventor, maybe not so much. Um, is there anything you can leave with anybody that's got a dream, that's thinking about launching a product, maybe it's a service, whatever, but it's a big idea. Yours is a big idea. Is there anything yeah. you can leave them with so they need to think twice before they jump in? Well, I, I find I'm on an inventor's network. I'm on the board of an inventor's network, and, and we have the opportunity to meet with people who have – you know, ideas and in reality, you call it an inventors network, but it's really an almost an entrepreneurial network because uh, we're not necessarily helping people create inventions. They tend to have something there. We might throw an idea or two at them, but 95% of the conversation is how are you going to take it to market? What's your target consumer? Where are you from a capitalization plan? And what there's a, a term, you know, you, you, we always think of key stakeholders. And I, I have, a, I call key nosh, key non-stakeholders. And what I mean is, that's a mentor that can be uh, an advisor, somebody who has no stake in the game, but somebody who's educated enough to give you blunt, honest, candid feedback, and somebody whom you trust that they're not gonna go take your ideas somewhere. What I find is a lot of people hoard those ideas, they're so afraid, and they start to work on them and work on them and build products on this with terrified about sharing their idea with somebody and I think terrified partly, consciously they don't want it stolen, but subconsciously they're afraid they're going to be told that the idea isn't good. Right. And they don't want to let go of the dream. And I think you have got to be brutal with yourself. Brutal. I launched this on a concept of importing a product from Japan, and I said, I know I love the concept of hydrogen. It's a technology play. I don't have the product. I have a minimal viable product I could bring in from Japan. And I met this beverage guru and he said, I love you. I love your passion. I love the technology. I love your partners. 
but your product, I can't help you because God can't help the product that you are going to take to market. And that was the wake up call three months into this journey that I need to invent a whole new product, a whole new concept. And I did. And it was a godsend. That was my first of four patents. It was the genesis of what we're doing. And now we're by far the lowest cost hydrogen infused beverage on the planet. We're the first to figure out how to add it to a carbonated beverage. Now we're adding it to spike seltzers, beers, you name it. Um, we've come up with a powder mix that we're going to add to non-sparkling water for sports performance. We've got a machine, um, you know, and we've got a next gen machine that's going to get to over a thousand cans a minute. And that's the same speed that Coca-Cola runs. So now we're in a position where, and we're using the same standard packaging that all these guys run. And our, our goal, and again, wh why do you want to go into what's your exit? Begin with the end in mind. It's maximum liquidity event for the shareholders. And so I'm positioning this to have IP in a position and have the scalability advantage so that now beverage as a delivery mechanism for this medicinal benefit of hydrogen is really viable. And let's put it in a product that people can engage not something that's going to sit at the pharmacy aisle at Target, but something that's going to sit in the beverage aisle or at the checkout lane right next to an energy drink where people invite friends over and go, have a high Vita. You want to have a high Vita with me? You don't, you don't say, do you want to have a dietary supplement with me and come on over and, you know, let's have a dietary supplement. Let's enjoy a dietary supplement. That sounds great. Let's do that. Oh, come on you over know? now. Come on, yeah. let's have a yeah. party. Yeah, and when you say it's taken orally, do you mind describing which direction it's going in? I mean, no, let's have fun. Let's make it a mixer. Let's make it a fun package. That's exactly what we've accomplished. And but you know, and you'll we're launching a whole new label. That's the other one. I you know found a good branding firm and 99designs.com, eleven hundred bucks. It's a nice label. Good for you. But I found out that some stores weren't taking the product because they didn't think the label would resonate with the consumer because you just talked about it. It's eye candy down that beverage aisle. You got to pop. You have three seconds. That's what they say. You have three seconds to get people to stop and then want to pick it up and look at it. And so you've got to be brutal with your baby. So every, every waking moment, I'm getting challenged. I'm finding experts and they're challenging my thought processes. And, you know, another hair is falling out. But it's, hey, it's this Rick, is great. Thank you very much. Great stuff. Thank you. We'll be looking forward. Thank you very much. It's Hyvita, Hyvita.com. Thank you.